Welcome back to the deep dive into squats. This is episode number two. And if you're following along from episode number one, thank you so much. Thanks for being here. And this episode is going to be all about the warm up, prepping for the squat and for your workout. Why should you be prepping? Why should you warm up? Well, think of it as a bridge between your day to day activity and, uh, and the gym, getting the body and mind ready to actually get the work done in the gym. Now for the warm up, you don't want to spend a lot of time on it. We're going to try and get 10 minutes or less with the warm up. For your warm up, we got five parts. We got foam rolling, mobilization, activation, movement prep. So I'm just warming up the movement and then excitation. We're going to go through each one of those. Starting with number one, foam rolling. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time foam rolling 30 seconds with, with each muscle group. And really you don't need to focus on all the muscles, just feet, quads, hamstrings, and glutes. When you foam roll, I'm not going to do each muscle group, but when you do foam roll, we're going to start in the base of the knee of the quad here, but it's much pressure that you feel comfortable in. You still want to be able to breathe. And we're just going to do small one to three inches here. And then you're just going to slowly travel up the leg in one to three inches. If you feel a spot that feels a little extra knotty, a little tight, sit on that spot, breathe, don't hold your breath, and move the joint that you're working on. So for here, moving the knee and then switch sides. So because we are warming up and preparing for squats, there's two joints I really wanna focus on, on mobilizing. Ankles and the hips. If those two areas are tight, you're not gonna have a great squat because they're gonna just feel really tight and you're not gonna be able to get full depth. So we wanna mobilize that. We're gonna start with the ankle. We're gonna do it just super simple, super simple ankle exercise here. We're gonna get a half kneeling stance here and then we're just gonna drive this knee over the toes, keeping the foot flat. So I definitely wanna do this barefoot so we can keep track of what the feet is doing. So I'm gonna try and track the knee over the first and second toe. As I do that, I'm not just gonna go in the range and come back. I want to get some engagement in that joint. So as I'm driving in, I'm gonna try and lift up the toes, hold that two, four seconds, and then push back. You're gonna do that for five to 10 reps on each side. Now for the hips, there are so many hip mobility exercises out there. Uh, here is just one, but definitely play around what feels best for you and what you feel like you get the most out of. I'm just gonna show you one of them. It's called the hip 90-90. So you're gonna get your front leg in the 90 degrees, back leg 90 degrees behind it here. Keep a neutral spine nice and tall. And we're gonna lean over this front leg, but we don't want our back hunched over. So keep the chest puffed out as you're leaning over the front leg. You should feel a stretch in the back of the glutes right here. It's great, that's what you want. You're gonna go as far as you can in that stretch, hold, and then drive that leg into the ground, trying to squeeze the glutes here. Again, five second hold, and then push back up, five reps on each side. After you're done mobilizing the joints that you are using for squatting, now we wanna activate the muscles that you need for squats, primarily, your glutes and your core. Now, don't think of activation as a light switch. It's not an on and off thing. Your nervous system is always on. If it wasn't, you'll be dead. No, think of the um, activation drills or your nervous system as a dimmer. During the day, at day-to-day -day activities, the, the nervous system, your light is dim. It's not very bright. You don't need a very strong or bright light bright nervous system to pick up a pencil or pick up a ball. So we use these dr drills to brighten your nervous system. All right, make it brighter and brighter. So that way when you go or in squat, your nervous system and muscles are primed and ready to go, especially as you get stronger and lifting more weights. So again, these are just two exercises, but there are so many you can choose to, to perform play around on what fits best for you. I'm just gonna show you two as a, an example. 
And we're gonna do this as a superset. So I'll actually do two to three rounds of this, not to fatigue, just enough to where, again, I am brightening the nervous system, I'm increasing the blood flow to that area and getting a better connection, a better feel to those muscles. So I'm only gonna do like five to eight reps for each, for both of these exercises in a superset manner. First one is a glute bridge. Pretty simple here. We're gonna lay down on your back, drive your elbows in the ground here, and then feet is actually gonna be kind of close to the glutes and a little outside the hip joint here. Play, uh, toes either straight or angled out to the side. Your preference, find what best for you. But we're gonna drive in and we're going to get nice and tight with your core. Now with your core, we want to make sure your ribs are pushed down. Very important when we get to squats, but we don't want you to be able to have, you don't want to be able to grab underneath your rib cage. So you don't want your rib cage to be flared out like this. So you shouldn't be able to get your fingers underneath the ribs. So you want to drive the ribs down, gauge the core to the point where the fingertips cannot go underneath the rib cage. All right, back is flat against the floor. And then I'm gonna drive up, squeeze the glutes, driving the knees out, come back down, tap, come back up. Again, five to eight reps, slow, controlled, really focus on the tension with the glutes. Imagine a walnut in between the butt cheeks, you're gonna crush the walnut. Just don't go as high as you can and lose tension in your core and let your upper back round. So you still want the hips tucked underneath you here, core engage as you're coming up and squeezing the glutes. Second exercise I really love before doing squats, and this is for the core, is a dead bug. Super simple dead bug here. You're gonna get your legs 90 degrees, toes pointing towards the shins here, get it really tight here. Again, your back is flat. Ribs are pushed down so they're not flared out. Arms straight up in the sky. And you can either make a fist or you can widen the hands as wide as you can and hold that tension here. Now, what most people don't think about is the shoulders. They typically leave the shoulders kind of relax on the floor. I want you to drive the shoulders up towards the sky and hold that tension. Now, if you've never done a dead bug before, keep it super simple, keep the knee bent as you alternate from side to side. And if you have done dead bugs before and a familiar, and you have the ability to straighten this leg out as you reach, come back and reach with the other side, alternating back and forth. Again, not to fatigue, just enough where you can kind of get a feel. So this can be anywhere between five to eight reps for each side. And I'm gonna do two to three rounds, give yourself about 10 seconds of rest between rounds. All right, next is movement prep. We're here, we're gonna practice the squat, slow, controlled, think perfect technique, so we can jump right into the workout once we are done with the excitation. So this is the area where we are just gonna really practice the squat form. So you can do this with body weight or just super lightweight, but right now I'm just gonna show you body weight and what it looks like with lightweight goblet style. You're gonna position your feet slightly outside, hit width apart, and this will change based off the individual. So definitely play around with it. Um, allows you to feel your best and squat your deepest. But right now, starting point, hip, uh, hip width apart. Toes slightly pointed out. You're gonna widen the toes, plant it into the ground, and we're going to actually let the inside of your feet kind of dive in a little bit and corkscrew out. Now, as you corkscrew out, you should feel immediate tension in the hips. Perfect, that's what you want. Remember, in the ground, I had you push your ribs down so they're not flared out. We're gonna do that now. Push the ribs down, tuck in the hips just a little bit, creating uh, tension in the core. A little side view, we don't want this. All right, we wanna tuck in the hips, ribs push down, nice and tight. And then once your arms out in front of you, like if you're gonna hold a plank, get really tight. So imagine oranges in the armpit and you wanna crush the orange and then push 
the elbows away from you. And we're gonna hold this tightness all the way from the toes up to the fingertips. And then you're gonna slightly push your butt back, keeping a neutral spine, and drop the hips down into a squat. Nice and slow, a little pause, and then come up, squeeze. So take that time to go down. Explode up. We're gonna do a total five reps, and that's it. You're gonna give yourself about 10 seconds of rest and go again for three rounds. Again, think perfect form. Think of what the muscles are doing, full body tension. And you can do the same thing, lightweight with a dumbbell or kettlebell. As you're going down, explode up. Three rounds, five reps. Give yourself 10 seconds in between rounds. Perfect form, practice. Last part of the warm up, the excite excitation stage. This stage is where you're gonna get your nervous system dialed all the way to super bright. This is where your nervous system is gonna be buzzing and this is gonna get the heart rate up a little bit. You're gonna start getting a little bit sweaty. This is where the end of the warm up goes and then we jump right into the workout as soon as we're done here. And one of my favorite things to do before squat day is a box jump. Now for box jumps, it's not about how high you can jump on the box. Really, it's about how quickly can you get off the ground to get on the box and how softly can you land on that box. So, right, so here's what not to do. You're not going to cannonball up and slam down. Instead, you're going to quickly get off the ground, soft landing, step down, and go again. Definitely start with the lower box, and as you get comfortable, you can go a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Just don't go so high where you have to drive your knees up to your chest to get on the box. Again, we're not doing this to fatigue. We're just doing this just enough to get the nervous system fired up and you ready to get into squats. And we're not doing this fatigue. You're only gonna do three to five reps three rounds and in between rounds you're doing 60 to 90 seconds of rest after that third round boom you're ready to get into the workout again all this should take you 10 minutes or less first time doing this might take you a little bit longer than that and that's okay there's a learning curve but the goal is to get it in 10 minutes or less and you should feel really good after this you should feel warm fired up more loose and ready to rumble there you have it. There is the warm up, how to, how to prep, a little bit of a template, fill in the blanks of what feels best for you for your warm up. But again, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for episode number three, where I go deeper into the form and types of squats or squat variations and its form. And if you don't already, make sure you subscribe so you know when episode three gets published. I'll see you next time.